hi and welcome to this youtube video so in this video i am going to teach you how to deploy a django project to railway so the first thing i would like to show you is the project that i have built so i built this uh to-do list website so i can log in right here and uh once i log in it takes us to the home page so this is loading slowly because it's connected to a database online so this is the basic um to-do list website that i built so I'm going to be teaching you how to deploy a project to railway and I'm going to be deploying this to do list website to railway. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is of course, create a railway account. So I want you to go ahead and create um, a railway account. And once you've done that, the next thing that we need to do is head over to GitHub. Now, if you don't have a GitHub account, please uh, create one as we're going to need it to deploy our project to real way so the next thing we're going to do is create a new repository so you can come down here to hit new and then you can decide to name your repository whatever you want to name it i'm going to name it um real way tutorial and then once you've done that just uh hit create repository and that's going to create a repository for you now the next thing that we need to do is uh we need to install a library that we are going to use in deploying our project so just go to your terminal of wherever um, your Django project is so uh, if I go to Visual Studio Code this is my project that is open right here so this is all the code now I need you to head over to your command line or your terminal and run the command pip install gunicorn that is uni g with the unicorn beside it so once you run that, it's going to install Geonicon for you. Now, I already have uh, Geonicon installed, so that's why it says requirement already satisfied. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a proc file, a file named proc file. Now, what exactly are we going to create right inside this proc file? I am going to show you. So I want you to head over to your root directory. That is where you have your manage.py file. That is where your root directory is. From, let me close close up all this so once you are in your root directory i want you to create uh, a new file and name it proc file as you can see it's p-r-o-c-f-i-l-e it doesn't have any extension no dot it's just called proc file so i want you to create that proc file remember in your root directory where you have your manage.py now once you've created this proc file i want you to type web colon geonicon space your project name dot whgi space dash dash log dash file space dash now i want you to think of this uh this tdl right here must be the name of your project if my project's name was test this would be called test but because my project's name is tdl i'm going to leave it as tdl my project's uh name right here tdl if i check my project folder your project folder is where you have the settings.py file so once you've created uh, this proc file and you've typed exactly what you see here, only that this TDL would be different because it's the name of your project. So after doing that, the next thing that we need to do is now create a requirements.txt file. Now, why are we creating a requirements.txt file? We are doing this because we need to tell Railway what libraries we used when we we're building our project so that when it is trying to deploy our project, it's going to be able to um, download and install the necessary libraries for our projects to run smoothly. So let me just zoom out here. So I would like you to go back to your terminal. And if you run the command pip freeze, you would see that uh, it will give a list of all the libraries that we have used inside our projects or inside our virtual environment. Now, mind you, I expect that you are building your project inside a virtual environment because uh, it is always advised to build your project inside a virtual environment. So this right here that we're getting is a list of all the libraries that are installed in this virtual environment. If I were to break out of this terminal right now and I type pip freeze, once I run this, you would see it will give me a bigger list. Now, what you are seeing here is a list of all the libraries right here. Sorry is a list of all the libraries that are installed on this computer. So this is why it is important to always have a virtual environment separated from your main computer. So let me just uh, 
go back to my um let me just reactivate my virtual environment uh sorry peep um show okay so now that i have reactivated it now we now need to create the requirements of txt file now remember i said if you say pip freeze it just gives us a list of all the libraries that we have used inside this virtual environment so what you now need to do is save all these libraries to a file a file named requirements.txt how do we do that we do that by saying pip freeze space angle brackets requirements dot txt now once you run this command it's going to create a file in your root directory and once you open that file the file is going to be called requirements.txt once you open it you would see it's a list of all the libraries that we had that we had used so when we run pip freeze um angle brackets requirements.txt it saved all those libraries to this file so the next thing now we now need to do is create another file named runtime.txt so uh i want you to please create this file in your roots directory again your roots directory is where you have the manage.py file so let's create this file named runtime.txt now once you've done that what we are going to be putting into this file is the python version that we are currently using as at the time of developing this project now what that means is um as we are currently working on this project we are using a particular version of python so we need to save that version to a file to let um, real we know what version of python this is meant to install for our project to work properly so to guess what python version you are using head to your terminal and run the command peep um sorry i'm running command python dash dash version now once you run this okay python space dash dash version so once you run this uh python space dash dash version once you run it, it's going to give you the current version of Python that you are currently using. I am using 10.3, 3.10.6, but um, when I built this project, I was using 3.10.1, so I am going to leave like this. Now, so once you've uh, run um, Python space dash just version, just copy whatever um, number is given here, whatever numbers are given here, 3.10.6, just copy it come over to the runtime.txt and type python dash whatever um, version you copied from your terminal now please i want you to take note of something that there is no space between the python the hyphen and the uh, number the version number so please take note of that as that could give you an error so once you've created this runtime.txt file in your root directory and you've added this python version you can just go ahead and close it now the next thing that we are going to want to do is uh come to our allowed host right here so normally your allowed host will probably be empty but we want to put in hysteric here so what this means is anytime our project is deployed any url any um, domain name can host this website so if you had a custom domain name you could just come here like if if you had a custom domain name like my website.com you would just come here and type my website.com but since uh when we deployed to um railway it doesn't give us a custom um domain name it generates one for us what you now need simply need to do is just pass in asterisk here meaning that any domain given to our projects can host our website so after doing that the next thing we now need to do is set up um static files now this is a very tricky part of hosting a django website so just scroll to the bottom of uh your file and here we need to now configure um static files so just make sure you type exactly what you see static url is equal to static and then static root is equal to os.path.join static files now what exactly those all these things mean so static files dirs represents where um the program can find all your static files sorry what can find your static files like your images your javascript files your css files now static files dirs which is um static root sorry 
sorry, static roots, I mean. Static roots uh, is where um, all your CSS files and all your static files are going to be compiled and put into. So we're going to run a command now called collect static. Once we run this command called collect static, the um, program is going to search through our project and every folder and look for every static file. Once it has found all those static files, it will bring all of them into the static files folder. So collect static basically um, collects all the static files in our project and puts them in one place, which is going to be the static files. So that is why I was um, declaring what static root is. So uh, if you want more um, explanation on this, I'll leave a link in the description below that will take you to the official Django um, documentation website. So the next thing I want to do is run the command python manage.py collect static. So run python manage.py collect static and just run this. Okay, sorry, I typed the wrong thing collect that static uh there is an error here it says can't open let me run that again okay i am in the wrong directory let me see ls so i need to cd into my roots directory so i would say cd to do abdg let me clear out my terminal so i'll run the command again python manage.py collect static and because i already have uh, i already collected static earlier uh it's going to ask me do you want to overwrite it i'm just going to say yes so you can see it says 133 uh or modified files where once you run this command on your computer it's going to say something like the number of static file you, files you have have been moved to static files uh the, to the static files directory so if i open the static files directory here i can see all the um, static files for the admin dashboard, the CSS, the fonts, the images, the JavaScript, and I can see my own static files that I created in my project. So the next thing that we now need to do is push all this code to GitHub. So let's make sure we save this file. If we come back to the web browser, remember that we had created a repository before and we named it uh, Railway Tutorial. So we are going to be pushing um all this code right now to github so that we can connect it to railway and host our project so uh let's go to the terminal let me clear this out so we're going to be writing a few commands right here so the first thing we need to do is initialize git into this project uh so make sure you're in your roots directory that is where you have your manage.py file so run the command git in it now, once you run that, it's going to say initialized empty git repository. Now, after doing that, we now need to gather every single item that is inside our project. So we do that by saying git add space dot. And then once you've done git add space dot, we now need to make a commit to git. If we come to the browser where we created a new repository, you can see they already gave us the steps. So after saying git in it, we run git add space dot. Now we need to uh, make a commit. So I'm just going to copy this line of code right here, um, of command, I mean, and paste it in the terminal. Now, once you run this, you can see it's creating mode for all these files in our project. Now, the next thing is to, um, the next thing is to copy this line of code right here, git branch dash m in, and then go to your command line, paste it run the command come back here also and copy this line after copying that we'll just paste it so we're just following the steps that they've given us and then the final command is git push dash u origin main so let's paste that and run it now once you run this final command it's going to push all this code to our repository and once it's done you can see it says branch main set up to track remote branch so once i reload the page you would see that all our files have been pushed, all our files and folders have been pushed to uh, this repository on GitHub. So everything's working perfectly so far. So the next thing that we now need to do is head back to our railway and uh, let's hit start a new project. Now, once we've hit start a new project, we're going to be brought to this page right here. Now, once you land on this page, there's probably going to be something around here, like um, a prompt. So what you, simply need to, what you simply need to do to clear that out is either to connect your railway to GitHub or to add your card. Now they won't charge you unless you um, 
go above a certain limit you can check their um pricing um service to see to know more about it but there is a free plan now what we can now do is hit deploy from github repo now if you hadn't connected your um your railway um, um account to your github account you wouldn't be seeing this so i want you to connect your railway and github accounts together so once you've done that you should be brought to this page and then what you now need to do is search for uh this repo that we had just created now the name of the repo is railway dash tutorial so i'm going to go back to railway and search for it and you can see we already have uh this it's already popping up so i want you to click it and then we're going to hit deploy now so once we've hit deploy now it's just going to we're going to be brought to this page and it's going to start deploying uh, our project you can see it says uh building and so uh we can see that it has been deployed so this right here is the um the um, url that has been provided to us by railway for to our project so if we click this url right here you would see that it would bring us to um this live um version of the website so this right here is the live version of the website and if i come back to the local version which is running on my uh running on localhost you can see it's the exact same thing that is running on the live version so uh that is all for today guys and if you would like to like build the build logs of uh your project you can just come over here to view logs and then you can click build logs so once you click build logs it will just show you um the logs and if you have any error i would advise like that like you come to the build logs or you can just ask me in the description i would and i would readily answer you so thank you for watching this video guys if this was helpful please don't forget to like share subscribe come back for more and i will see you in the next one